Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about losing interest in a hobby when it becomes a job. This is something I know quite a few people are worried about because I've received a fair number of direct messages, I've taken part in some conversations on the Discord, and I've received emails from people that are worried about making the wrong choices in life. Now I'm definitely not the right kind of person to ask for advice on career choices or life paths, but I think this is an interesting topic to talk about because I think it will help a fair number of people out there who are struggling with this kind of issue. So imagine for a moment that you're by yourself doing a highly creative uh, hobby, something that you really enjoy. Maybe you're playing the piano and making music. Maybe you're painting some kind of landscape. You don't require anyone else's approval, but you're doing it just because you love it. Suddenly the opportunity arises for you to do this for money. And to start with, it sounds like a really good idea. But then when you get into it, you realize that what you want to make doesn't necessarily line up with what a client wants. Now, of course, this is a general reality of paid work. There's nothing new there. If you want to work for someone else, you need to be aware of what they want and then work towards that. But for a lot of people, getting caught up in the dream of doing something that they love as a job doesn't prepare them for the reality of frustration that can arise from disagreements or having to go through dozens or hundreds of revisions over the same piece of work over and over and over again. And a lot of people come to the realization a bit too late. The, the thing that they thought they would really want to do as a job, they don't actually enjoy doing as a job. Now, I've definitely felt this before. There was a point, I think roughly between 2015 to 2017, when I was applying for every kind of job that would possibly fit within my skill set, something that I thought that I would enjoy because I, had, I have these wide range of hobbies. And I figured that, well, if I can get a job in one of these, then I'll be happy. Now, I was declined for everything. I applied for visual effects, game development, software development, uh, QA, and all sorts of other stuff, but I got nowhere. So I had to settle for doing freelance work. Some of it was very enjoyable, but some of it was... But then after having some experience with freelance, I decided to work on a massive personal project. And if you want to learn more about that, I think I spoke more in detail about it in my interview with CG Boost and also quite frequently on the Blender Nest podcast. And I highly recommend you go and subscribe. Now, this personal project was very enjoyable. It was very fun to do, and I've got lots of good memories from it. But after that project was done, I was finally presented with an opportunity to do professional artwork for a full time job. So working in an office for someone else doing art. Now, I always thought this was something that I wanted to do because this was a pivotal point for me because it basically decided the direction of whether to go professionally or do something else, which ended up being YouTube. Now, when it came to deciding whether or not to take up that professional opportunity, I was doing a lot of self-reflection and I was comparing the feelings I got from doing freelance work with the feelings I got from doing my personal projects. And the difference in emotional satisfaction was immense. And I suddenly began to worry that if I started doing this professionally, I would begin to hate it. Because on the whole, I did not enjoy making artwork for other people's projects. So I made a big life decision at that point. I thought that if I was going to go into full-time employment, I would not want to have it associated with any of my hobbies. Because my hobbies meant so much to me on a personal level that I didn't want to tarnish them with negative experiences that could come about from the frustration of working for someone else or doing it like other massive projects that I'm not interested in, but I'm being required to do because it's part of the job. Now, thankfully for me, that decision has paid off so far. Now I'm doing YouTube and I can wake up every day and make whatever I want to make and share it online. And for somehow this has turned into a job. So it's a perfect compromise between doing what you want to do and making money off of it and not having any boss or manager tell you what you can or can't do or telling you to do so many revisions over the same thing. Now you can make the argument that the audience is the client and what they want is what you should make. And yes, to a certain degree that's true. We're all slaves to the algorithm making this kind of prosumer content. But on the whole it's a very enjoyable line of work and I'm very grateful that I'm in a position to make content that people will see. Now taking my personal experience in mind it gives me a soft spot when people come to me with similar issues. Because I don't want people to ever feel depressed or upset when they realize that something that they've been dreaming of for such a long time doesn't pan out in exactly the way that they wanted it to. So what should you do if you're in a position where you're afraid that you won't enjoy your hobby anymore if you pick it up as a job? Say that you're a young adult, you need to make a choice as to what kind of career you want to go down. You don't know whether it's better to focus on something a bit more academic and sensible or actually go for creativity, which you really enjoy. It highly depends on so many factors, including your personality, the sort of satisfaction you get from your work, what kind of work you make, where you are, the kind of jobs available where you are, and so many other factors. But what I can say to people is there's no harm in experimenting. If you don't know whether you want to do something creative for a full-time job, you can try freelance. 
you don't need to do it forever. You can pick up a couple of jobs and then see if you enjoy it. Some people really enjoy the iterative processes between yourself and the client. And for quite a few people, the transition is quite easy between having all the validation coming from yourself and then having it come from a professional partner. And I have no idea whether there's a correlation between extrovert type personalities finding this a more enjoyable process than introverts, but that'd be interesting to learn about. Anyway, yeah, it really depends because you might not know whether you enjoy doing a hobby as a job until you find the right environment to work in. For example, maybe you find yourself in like an open plan office job for a massive company and there's lots of conventions you need to follow and it's not very personal because you're just doing a bunch of tasks and you find that this isn't very enjoyable because those tasks don't really line up with your personal interests. Take that and compare it to say a small independent studio where everyone knows each other personally, you get to know what each other like doing and you get to delegate tasks between each other and everyone's more of a generalist and it's more of a casual vibe. If you only work in one of these types of environments, you don't know how you would feel in the other one until you try it. So I would say if you find yourself in a position where you've realized that you don't enjoy doing your hobby as a job, maybe you're just not in the right kind of environment for it. So it's not all doom and gloom. But again, I can't speak for you, only you can speak for yourself. It's up to you to make a decision for what kind of direction you want to take in life. But it's also worth keeping in mind that if you're in a position where you have the opportunity to do something that you've enjoyed as a hobby, as a job, then this is something that's highly privileged and something that shouldn't be taken for granted because there are so many people around the world that have no choice in what kind of work they can do and are forced into very uncomfortable life situations just to try and survive. So not finding maximum satisfaction in your work is very much a first world problem, but that doesn't mean it's still not a valid issue. Because as we well know, mental health issues for everyone is a massive issue right now, especially with all the stuff going on in the world. So knowing how to put yourself into an environment and a position where you are comfortable and the happiest you can possibly be is something that I think everyone should strive for. But it's up to you to go on that personal journey to make the discovery in finding out what you enjoy. And hey, if you need help in figuring that out, now we are more interconnected than ever. You can find a community for pretty much everything. And I'm sure there will always be people to talk to for opinions, for advice, for criticism and feedback. And I think this is especially evident in the Blender community. We're a massive and vibrant group of different personalities, nationalities, ethnic groups, interests and expertise. You are in no doubt going to be able to find people that are interested in similar things to you and are on the same wavelength as your personality. So how can we sum this all up? Well, I get this video is more of a rambling than actually giving proper advice and opinions and sources for you to explore. So I think it's important to experiment and explore your interests as well as your emotional reactions to things like frustration that can be caused by working for clients and other people. You won't really know how you truly respond to it until you try it for yourself. I don't really have a sponsor or affiliate for this video, so this video is sponsored by me. Check out my resources on Gumroad and my website at curtishold.online. Okay, but really, I think CG Boost is actually coming out with a course helping people get into freelance professionally at some point in the future. So maybe keep an eye on their website. I'll probably talk about it more when it comes out in the future because I think that could be very helpful for a lot of people. And you know how I love CG Boost content. Anyway, if you find any of these discussion videos helpful and you want to share them with other people, I've made a blog post on my website called Mental Health Crash Course for Creative Personalities, which has all of the discussion videos we've made so far, organized, saying exactly what it contains so it's easy to share with people. So yeah, I think that's where we'll leave it. Although one thing I do want to throw in that's just come to mind is that if you do have so many interests that you don't know where to take yourself, try putting some stuff on YouTube and Gumroad. You never know where it might take you. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you're staying safe and doing well. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to Blender Nest for weekly discussions with your favorite creators. Okay, thanks. Bye.